Have you ever considered how much energy we could generate from our cars? Currently, we have about 4,000 cars driving on minor roads alone, with each car weighing about 2 tons each. GPE is the potential energy possessed by an object depending on its mass and distance above the surface of the Earth, meaning that each of these cars possesses a lot of this energy that we aren't utilizing. A suitable way to convert all this energy is via the use of energy generating speed bumps, which might be a suitable way to convert all these previously unused energy into an ideal form that we can use, for example, the powering of street lamps. So how would these energy generating speed bumps work? The speed bumps are held in suspension over the ground by the use of a spring. When a car goes over the bump, the bump goes down using the car's GPE. Elastic potential energy is the energy stored in an object as a result of the changing of shape of the object. In this instance, the stretching of the springs. The kinetic energy, aka the energy generated by a movement, in the first gear is used to turn another gear, and this turns a motor. The energy in the motor could either be stored in a generator or transferred directly to the national grid for when it's dark outside and the street lights turn on. To analyse whether these energy generating speed pumps are a viable option, we need to look at how much energy they produce and how efficiently this energy is transferred to the street lamps. Firstly, we need to look at the work done of the car on the speed pump to see how much energy is produced using the equation work done equals force times distance moved. The law in the UK states that any traffic calming device can have a height of no more than 10 centimetres and the average mass of a mid-sized car in the UK is 1,590 kilograms, or a weight of 15,582 newtons. Assuming the speed hump is fully depressed, the energy per depression is 1,558.2 joules. Since the speed hump is depressed twice, the energy uh, per car will be doubled due to it passing over with its two sets of wheels, so it will be 3,116.4 3, joules, assuming the full weight of the car is applied to each hump. Due to the efficiency of the system only being 80%, we can only harness 2,500 joules of this energy. How will this energy be utilised for street lamps? From the government's annual road traffic estimate in 2013, a minor 30 mile per hour road with speed bumps along it is estimated to have 4,000 cars travel on it a day. From this, we can say that over the course of a day, an energy generating speed bump will produce 4,000 cars times 2,500 joules which should equal 2.78 kilowatt hours per day. Additionally, in the UK, there is an average of 12 hours of daylight each day and on average, a street lamp will operate on an 80 watt power supply, which is 80 joules per second. As the average night is 12 hours long, which equals 43,200 seconds, each lamp will use on average 43,200 seconds times 80 joules per second, which would equal 0.97 kilowatt hours per night. Therefore, we can see that a speed hump will power on average 2.89 lamps per night. So how much is this energy actually worth? In the UK, the current commercial price of electricity is 17.2 pence per kilowatt hour. Therefore, as we have previously shown, each speed bump will make 2.78 kilowatt hours of energy per day, saving 47.8 pence. An energy generating speed pump is estimated to last 3 to 5 years. Therefore, over the 5 years, the money return will be 5 years times 365 days times 47.8 pounds. In total, this will be £872.35. An energy generating speed pump has an estimated cost of £2,000, which is the same as a standard speed pump. Therefore, over its 5 year lifespan, it is estimated to produce £872.35 of electricity. This means that over its five year lifespan, an energy generating speed hump will not generate enough energy to pay for itself. Therefore, as a business proposition, it is not economically viable for a business to set these up in order to generate profit. However, since speed humps are a necessity on the UK roads and an asphalt speed hump costs the same amount as an energy generating one, it would be silly for the government and the local authority not to introduce these energy generating speed humps. To conclude, if a business is involved in the creation and development of these humps, it would be beneficial for them to go into business with the authorities such as the government or the local council. This is because these humps cost the same as a normal speed hump and can be implemented in the same way.